To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm your host today, Mukherjee. In a landmark deal, Sony and Z have come together to form what would be India's largest entertainment media company. And to talk about that deal, the contours of that deal, uh, I have with me Puneet Goenka, who's going to be the managing director and CEO of this merged entity. Puneet, thank you very much for joining in. First up, I want to ask you about your motivation for this deal because I mean, you have the CEO's chair, but at the end of the day, Sony, who's used to be your arch rival, will be the promoter of the company and you are left with less than a 4% stake. What prompted you to go for this deal? Udin, I had a 4% stake before this deal happened and I will be left with a 4% stake after this deal happens. I think uh, from my perspective, the most, the biggest motivation was the fact that I want to bring this company uh, into the hands of the right promoters and I'm going to be a promoter too. Uh, who will see that this company prospers and grows to the heights that it deserves to and delivers the value that it deserves to deliver to all the stakeholders and the shareholders. That was my motivation for doing this deal. Mm. Well, you said you wanted the company to come into the hands of the right promoters. Are you alluding to what the episode which happens if, happened a few months ago when Reliance was in talk with you, was in talks with you, but they backed away because they could not agree on terms with you. But did you fear that uh, your minority shareholder Invesco could get another strategic investor or worse, that there could be some kind of a hostile takeover attempt at Z because the promoter holding was so small and it is to ward off such a, such a possibility that you chose to do the marriage with Sony? So then it's not about one corporate versus another. I think it's a fact that we have been approached by uh, uh, strategic investors in the past. We've been approached by financial investors in the past, but eventually what is the benefit of all the stakeholders is the utmost important for, importance for me. And, and that's why I chose the Sony deal. It's not about uh, one deal versus the other, but what benefits all the stakeholders including my employees, uh, uh, is what is the core of my decision-making process. Or is it that any other promoter uh, who, which may have come in, a shareholder which may have come in, would not have allowed you to be the CEO and managing director of the company? Because you, you have less than a 4% stake. Any company which owns more than 50% would be perfectly entitled in asking for the CEO's chair. Well, that stays true even in the case of the merger with Sony. Uh, while I have, as part of my agreement, a five-year term, uh, but nothing is guaranteed in life. So therefore, if I do not perform, I, I can be ousted from this chair even a year down the line. So from that perspective, uh, one, a CEO has to choose whether he can perform or not. And if one chooses to perform, then you deserve the position. If you don't, you don't. It's an interesting point that you make because, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you are in the CEO's chair, but the board is going to be entirely controlled by Sony. I think five of the independent, five of the directors would be appointed by Sony and three independent directors and you on the board. So, do you feel that you have the authority to run the company or de facto Sony runs the company and the CEO's chair is a face saver for you? Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, the board uh, runs the company from a governance point of view and from a strategic uh, input point of view. At the end of the day, the CEO and the MD runs the company on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's true for any, any company, not just my company. Uh, I have full assurity from uh, Sony and uh, <clears throat> from their shareholders that the fact is that they have chosen me for today. Uh, and therefore, uh, the point is that if I perform, if the company performs, there's no reason for any change. But would you be allowed to take any major decision without consulting the board? Because as you said, the CEO runs the company. 
But when there is the matter of a major strategic direction or a decision, you have to go to the board. And if the board's control is not in your hand, would the board be running the company rather than you as the MD and CEO in major and critical and strategic decisions? So even today, over there, uh, the board runs the company even at Z. So if I have to make any strategic decisions about financial investments which are beyond a certain criteria, I have to go back to the board. And I, ha I am governed by the annual business plan that I operate under. And if I deviate from that, I have to go back to the board on a quarterly basis and get their, get their uh, inputs and, and sanctions. So th therefore, how does it change with now, Sony coming? Yeah. Now, let me ask you about this 4% stake uh, because we've spoken about that. There is a clause in the, in the deal which says that you can take it up to 20%. Uh, the way it is worded, it seems like the route from 4 to 20 can only be through open market purchases. Would you co concur with that? That if you have to take it up, it has to be purchases from the open market and there is no preferential route available to you? Yes, that's correct to them. It is uh, actually going to be completely through the open market and through prescribed norms that the LODR under the SEBI norms uh, can, can assure us. And there is no preferential treatment that is being allowed for the existing promoters. Uh, uh, and it's actually a restriction on us that we can't go beyond 20%. Hmm. Is it your intention to take it up from 4 to 20? And by when, if, if at all that is your intention, by when do you see the Z promoter family taking its take up from 4 to 20? I have no timeline, uh, Odehan, right now. This is only a enabling clause that we have in the contract. Uh, my intention, of course, would be to own a lot more of uh, the company, but there is no timeline that I have defined, nor has the family defined. Would you have the cash to buy that much stake, uh, Puneet? Because in 2019, your family had to sell nearly 16-17% of its holding, 16-17% uh, stake in Z because of financial compulsions. Do you now have the recourse to take the stake up much higher than your current 4%? So today I don't have Udin and uh, maybe hit a, I hit a lottery ticket and that may give me the cash to buy the stake. Okay. Uh, the other curious clause in this, and it is a curious one, uh, Puneet, to me, is that you've got a non-compete shareholding a fee of 2% in Z, in the combined entity. Now, why would Sony agree to give you a non-compete? You are the MD and CEO of the company. Why does the principal shareholder give the CEO of the company a non-compete so that he cannot compete with his own company? What, what sense does that make? Well, they're not giving it to me. They're giving it to the SL group and the promoter family. Right? So Which that's are, the you are part of and you represent on the... Yes, but as my individual capacity as the MD of this company, I am the only one restricted by my natural appointment as the MD to not compete. But my family and the SL group is not bound by that contract of my employment or my MD ship in this company. And therefore, it is Sony's right to ask for uh, that the family and the company and the group does not compete with the merged entity. And in that lieu, they are paying this fee. This is a strange one, Puneet, and I don't think it will stand scrutiny with your minority shareholders and certainly not with Invesco, who is quite a militant minority shareholder, because it seems very specious. You, they are pay, you cannot distinguish between you and the, and the promoter family. You represent that in Z. I mean, nobody would say that there is a line between Puneet Goenka and the Subhash Chandra family. And you are accepting a 2% non-compete as MD and CEO of the company so that you cannot do anything in, in the harmful interest of, uh, of the merged entity. Do you think this will pass scrutiny from your minority shareholders? Well, then we have, a, we, have a, we have a deal that is a composite deal. And that's where it is, right? And the, the shareholders' wisdom decide whether it's a deal that they want to go for or not go for. And it's not uh, subject to one clause or so, the other. 
It's a composite scheme which uh, either gets approved or does not get approved. No. So have you discussed the contours of this deal with Invesco, who's actually created quite a stir back in October by writing that open letter? Does this deal have their blessings? Because, I mean, in Z, they own about 17, 18% stake. So they are a very important shareholder of the company. Have you discussed all the contours with them? Well, then I'm obligated to talk to my board and that's about it. And the shareholders will have their say at the shareholder meeting when they vote for this scheme. And if they choose to not like it, so be it. So where do things stand with Invesco? I mean, is there still a Bombay High Court uh, case pending out there? Have they retracted it in the light of this announcement today? I mean, where do things stand with that? We just signed the definitive agreements yesterday. Then, So I have had no information or mm. contact with Invesco so far nor have I engaged with any other shareholders so far. Until the CCI applications and the SEBI stock exchange applications are not made, I do not intend to engage with any shareholder. Only after that, I will engage with shareholders mm. and get their views on whether they like or dislike this proposal that I have brought to the board, which the board has blessed. And uh, eventually the shareholders vote will count. I need 75% uh, of the minority vote for this uh, to go through and uh, let the wisdom of the larger shareholders prevail. So, Puneet, you spoke about getting shareholder appro approval. Do you have any information from Invesco that they will press for an extraordinary general meeting or anything of the sort? Or will it follow the normal course of such a merger process going through? So, then I have no information from them whatsoever because uh, they took the matter to the courts and the matter is now sub -judis. Therefore, I can't comment on that. But as I have said many, many times, I am not the person who likes conflicts. And if they would like to come and sort out the matter, I'm happy to engage in a dialogue. And that's my position even today. Okay, fair enough. Now, let me ask you about what Z and Sony will do in the OTT space because you know I, I read that Invesco letter which they brought out in October and they spoke about lack of leadership and from what I read between the lines they were basically alluding to the fact that Z probably was a laggard in the OTT space uh, which they were not very happy about. Uh, a would you concede that you've been a bit of a slow mover in OTT and now with this deal will things change substantially? So I can confirm to you then that we were the last entrant in the OTT space, uh, given what the other players have done. But we have made great strides in the last couple of years. Uh, I think we are a formidable player there as well. But certainly with this merger, uh, it will give us a lot more leverage in terms of uh, claiming the number two position in the OTT market. And uh, that's only going to take us from leaps to bounds. Mm. So will Sony Live and Z5 both exist? Or do you see the need for any kind of rationalization in the OTT space now? Well, then that's a decision for the Merge Coast board to decide. But uh, I think the both have uh, distinct and enough consumers of their own. Therefore, the integrations of the two platforms, if it needs to get that done, will have to be planned in a very, very intricate manner. But the board of the Merge Co will decide that. Hmm. No, I, I hear you when you say that the, it is for the board to decide. But, you know, when you come together for such a major deal, you obviously at the management level between C and Sony would have explored the need for such a deal from the content perspective, because there are overlaps. Both of you have GECs, both of you have OTTs. What was the general thinking is what I'm trying to ask you. Did you speak about the overlaps and did you see the need for rationalization or did you see all these channels which are competing channels in the marketplace being synergistic in any way? I think that all of the linear business is very synergistic uh, in its own right because we literally have uh, very, very minimal overlap uh, in terms of the audience base that we address. 
right? They have a sports business that we don't have. We have a vernacular business that they don't have. Uh, so from that perspective, that's a very, very uh, opportunistic uh, thing for us to play on. On the digital side, certainly there are many, many questions to be answered. But given the fact that we have a long way to go between the regulatory approvals and getting the two companies together, uh, we will be unveiling our plans in the times to come. Uh, I have certain thoughts and I'm sure the Sony management has certain thoughts as to how these two companies can work together in terms to create value for the shareholders and the stakeholders, uh, including our people. And, and, and those are things to be worked out in the next six to eight months. Hmm. Uh, what about the GEC space? Uh, I, I take your point about vernacular and sports, but in GEC, two large GECs under their own brands, do you see them continuing or some other shape, take, uh, some other form taking shape? Well, why not? One GEC is addressing a pure comedy genre and the other GEC is addressing uh, largely the non-fiction genre of uh, the metro and the uh, urban audiences, whereas uh, our GECs are addressing the mass market. So why can't they coexist? And you say that uh, it will take many months for this deal to come together. But in this interim, some of the biggest sports deals are coming up. I mean, in, this bit, in the next nine months or so, you'll have a, another major four or five year IPL deal. Uh, now, you know, if you have to be a serious player in sports, you have to consider IPL seriously. So would the combined entity be willing to lay out whatever between three and five billion dollars for the next IPL rights? Well, firstly, we can't, uh, until the merger happens, we cannot bid for the IPL uh, together. Uh, we individually will consider the IPL uh, bid document as and when it's available. And I'm sure Sony will do the same. Uh, but certainly we are very serious about the sports business. And uh, as demonstrated by a small acquisition of the Emirates Premier League that we acquired uh, a couple of months ago. So we are very clear that we want to re-enter the sports business irrespective of whether the merger happens or not. Mm. So I want to come back now to the original starting point of my questioning, which is uh, the motivation behind the deal. Uh, you know, in Invesco's letter, there were very serious allegations about, you know, corporate governance, alluding to maybe even siphoning off of funds, etc. Uh, you mean, are any of those reasons for cobbling up a deal like this, where you probably don't uh, show the world the books which Invesco is talking about? Uh, because of such a deal going through? Are those considerations at all? Because there, was very, there were very serious allegations made by your principal shareholder at that point. Well, the books have been seen and inspected, not just by my auditors, special auditors, SEBI, and now even Sony. And we still have signed the definitive agreement. Let the world decide what are in my books or what is not in my books. Hmm. But, you know, it's interesting that uh, you are going to be in the CEO's chair because over the last 12 or 13 years, I mean, till the announcement of the whiff of this deal got into the market back in September, your stock did nothing. And at the end of the day, you, deliver, you do a business to deliver shareholder value. You took over in 2008. I, th I think the stock then was about, if I remember correctly, 150 or something in that ballpark. In September this year, the stock was 170. You know, over a 13 year period, you do practically zero returns. Uh, I mean, that's not a very good track record to boast of uh, to get back into the CEO's chair, is it? Yeah, it's a bit unfair, then. I think you should uh, not give it 11 year horizon to track the stock uh, price. Look at it in uh, maybe shorter periods and see what uh, is the delivery that I have done. Uh, what has transpired in the last two or three years is not testimony of the delivery of the business. It is also got to do with a lot of external factors of what the promoter group has gone through. So please don't generalize this and, and uh, make it sound like what uh, you're trying to make it sound like. So uh, from the perspective of the shareholder value, I think I've delivered a lot of shareholder value 
since the time I've been CEO of this company. And I'm not trying to justify my position at all here, but the track record speaks for itself. Sony has chosen me to run the company going forward. Well, we'll have to end it there, but uh, that was the managing director and CEO of Z talking about this deal. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.